Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. No Astana Cav announcement officially. Maybe it's just a rumor. Who knows? So we soldier on. But as always, this show is brought to you by Zwift. The Zwift Hub is available. The best priced trainer on the market, according to DC Rainmaker, who probably the most authoritative reviewer, uh, of these sort of tech products, he said it's a product that bats well above every other trainer in that price ballpark, which is under five hundred dollars US, and it is available in the UK, the US, and Europe. So, if you want to get on top of your New Year's resolutions, there's no better time than now. Check out the Zwift Hub. If you haven't got a trainer, that will allow you to hop on Zwift, hop on, hop in a lot easier. And you can, yeah, choose which cassette. It's easy to set up. There's YouTube videos attached. It's never been easier to train indoors on Zwift with the Zwift Hub. But Antamarche Benji, now to be called Antamarche Circus Wanty. So we have lost a few syllables. Not enough, <laughs> in my opinion. How are you rating their 2022 24 wins? I think the team had a wonderful year. Definitely performed, overperformed in certain races. And that's mainly in like the classic season. We were speaking so much about Anton Marche doing better than expected. And Roubaix was the highlight of that, I think, where Tom de Vrind also performed really well. And I think... Um, was it Adrien Petit that was also strong, fourth and sixth, Paris Roubaix? Yes, indeed. So those two riders really strong there. At LBL, Quinton Hermans getting second. Uh, so let's be honest about it. This team was just performing left and right. Binyam winning against Wevelgem is definitely the victory that we remember the most from the Classics because they didn't win the other Classics, obviously. But Christoph also winning Schelderprijs. I think Kent Wevelgem, Binyam was kind of like the opening of Binyam's continued progression and then people were super hyped about him towards the Giro and so forth where he once again performed where he once again took a stage win fought against Van der Poel in one of the earliest stages as well in uh was it Visegrad on the first stage Jan Hirt one of the older guys in the team got a stage win at the Giro also performed really well together with Tarame at the Saudi tour was it Saudi tour tour of Oman Green Mountain oh true close enough <laughs> then uh, we've got Pozzo Vivo in the team and I swear Pozzo Vivo got like 8th at the Giro but I swear he would have gotten higher up if he didn't crash in that descent where Nibli tried something I don't remember which descent it was but Nibli had a small, like, small attack and I got super hyped and then Pozzo Vivo was the only rider that was following him and then Pozzo Vivo crashed because everybody knows that if you follow Nibli in the descent then there's about a 50% chance that you crash out your GC and Pozzo lost quite a bit of positions in GC that day. So 6th and 8th at the Giro with Hirt and Pozzo Vivo. That's once again rather strong. Then Tour de France comes around. Louis Mankies, 7th at the Tour de France. Nearly won on Alpe d'Huez. He had uh, just Tom Pitcock to, uh, to beat, but that did not happen. And Louis Mankies then wins a stage at the Vuelta, but only gets 11th at the Vuelta. What do you think is... Um, what do you think is the most important thing they've achieved this year? What result is the most important one? Oh, it has to be Ken Favelham, especially as a uh, Belgian team. So, yeah, that's really important. You take that over a, a Giro or Vuelta stage win, probably all the Grand Tour stage wins combined because none of them are a Tour de France stage win. Probably just the the performance across the board. I think the big difference is that they have – so many riders performing. They have won races with Binium, Hirt, Christoph, Tyson, Pasqualon, Menkes, Taco, Tarame, Bacalance, even won a stage of Volony, uh, Rota. So Hermans really spread across the board winning yeah. these races and throughout the year. So that's that means they're doing something right. In their training, in their setup, I think the bike's probably underrated. The TT bike's not. It's, it's not very good, I don't think. But <laughs> um, obviously, the climbing bike and sprinting, also, it's, it's fine. Who's going to do the TTs in the steam anyway? Binyam's terrible at them. Mate, you see Jan hit his UAE Tour TT. <laughs> was. <laughs> 
I couldn't believe it. Um, because I thought he was going to win UA two after Tour of Oman, and then the TT is like Jesus. You can, you do eight walls per kill in her feet. You're not making that time back up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the we've said all those positive things, and it has been a great season. But Quinton Hermans has gone to Alperson. Jan Hirt's gone to Quickstep as Remco's domestique. Pozzo yeah. is not confirmed to have re-signed. Anywhere, Binium's on a long-term extension, their most valuable rider. Christoph's gone to Uno X. That's three and a half of their top riders out the door. And who have they got coming in? Rui Costa on a one-year. Um, uh, Mike Turnison from Yumbo, Carmesan, Dion Smith, Arnemarit, Herrhoz, Mattis Mickles. Lawrence Rex, Tom Paco from Bingal, Dries de Pota. Do you think they have replaced all those riders or have the potential to? I don't think they have replaced all those riders. I am not certain about replace the potential of those riders because Christoph is a big point scorer. Like he doesn't win every single day throughout the season, but he wins Kelderpray still. But outside of that, just consistent point scoring. And when we look at the guys that they signed, maybe Turnison can try and replace that if he rides the same schedule, which I'm not certain about. But then again, Antermarche is pretty decent when it comes to choosing the schedule, I guess, except for the second half of the season of Binyam, which I would have done slightly differently. But Rui Costa, for example, that one year, I don't mind that because it's a one year. Let's say it's a three year, I'd say, oh, big trouble. But Rukashta on a one year, I think he can be helpful both as a domestique and might even go for a stage somewhere still. So I think that's still valuable. I'm more asking myself why with the likes of a Kalmajan, he's not the older rider in the team. It's not the oldest rider they signed, Kalmajan. He's actually only 30, which is rather young compared to the other old guys that they signed. And he's the kind of rider that performed really well three, four years ago when he was on Total Energy. Uh, when it was direct energy back in the day with that, that through the front stage where he was about to win and then he started cramping and I'm not even certain if he still won that race or not. Ah, the memories of Karl Jean at direct energy, those were the days. But now he's kind of just top 10 in Coupe de France races, which is not necessarily what this team is looking for unless they are. Are they looking in Karl Jean at someone who can just consistently score points at these 1.1 Coupe de France races or do they expect more from him? I think they want to do what they did with Hit and Tarame and give yeah. him a second career at Intermarche after some years in the wilderness. And so if he's not on huge money, I mean, he does have the Tour de France uh, stage on his Palmares, then uh, it's not too bad, is it? But it depends on the money. Um, Turnison, it makes sense because yeah. he wasn't going to get any, like, leadership opportunities at Yumbo Visma, their classic squad's ridiculous. Maybe at Roubaix he can get in the break mm -hmm. like he did this year, but that makes a lot of sense. He's got a sprint on him. He can score a lot of points. Dion Smith as well, who is older than I thought, but he's come top 10 in Milano San Remo. I, again, think he's just another fast guy like Arna Maris. Rune Herohotz should have been signed by Quickstep instead of someone like Tim Merlier, but... Um, yeah, Intermarche are picking up the, the Sport Vlandering guys now. It's kind of surprising. Dries de Pote is quite good too from Hagen's. The one I really, really, really like is Mattis Mickles from uh, Team Ampla Tartu. He's 19 years old. Now, if you were following the relegation battle really, really closely, you would have watched the grainy footage of Tour of Estonia where uh, Bike Exchange went there hunting points <laughs> desperately uh, also, I think because uh, Kanga tried to convince him to go. Anyway, <laughs> Mickles destroyed Caden Groves on this uphill false flat drag, like gapped him, completely put time into him. Ridiculous finish. He's 19. He came fourth at Worlds, sixth at Grand Piemonte. If you look at the next two years, I don't like how short the contract is, two years. Yeah. Um, if you look at the next two years, he's not going to be as good as Christoph next year probably. But in 2024, I don't know. 
I'm really high on this guy. Like if he was from an, another country, he'd be on a, be on a three year deal at quick step or whatever. He's a beast. And I think he's ready to perform at those dot pro one, one day races already and, and win them. Exactly. But, you say when it comes to the contract, you don't like that it's two years for Anton Marche, that is, because for Mattis yeah. Mikkels, that is perfect, eh? Once he yeah. reaches his potential <laughs> in 2024, then he's like, I'll rack in the money. What offers are coming yep. my way? Then he's going to choose, and that's perfect for him. They've got quite a few riders similar in the sense that he's a strong, talented, versatile, sprinty guy. Let, let's see that as his, his category right now. But then we look at the team they already have. We've got Kevin Tyson, who's... Probably their highest rater flat sprinter to get away a Binyam right now. And then they've also got the likes of that Dion Smith that is coming in that also has that versatile sprint in him, but hasn't really performed the way that I expect the Mahdi's Mickles will perform. Then Hugo Page is he's the guy that got slapped twice by Milano. Uh, that's what he's known for now, but he's actually a pretty versatile sprinty guy as well whether he will break through is not known at all but i did hear some rumors that he's doing pretty good at the training and camp he's like 21 and enter right? yeah he's really young still as well so mike turnison also a versatile sprinty guy they are racking these guys up and that's where i'm like where are they going to send these guys where are they going to send the Marty's mickles and mike turnison and so forth and mike turnison's obvious right with the cobble team with binyam and so forth yeah he's definitely fitting in that team and we've seen these cobble races go towards a dynamic where Teams are super important, having a stronger team, because otherwise the leader has to respond to everything. And with Turnison in the team, Binyam doesn't have to respond to every attack. Turnison can go up the road and so forth, put Binyam in a better position. Dynamics there, Binyam is still the higher up in my opinion. Turnison the secondary leader. I'd still say leader because we've seen the Vrind and Petit top six Paris Bay. So let, let's be honest about it. Turnison can also do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mickles will be as good as Benny in 24, maybe better. Okay. Um, I think Flat sprints or? Just overall rider. I think he's the one. Um, that's, Benny got a lot of positioning problems, crash problems. Um, I don't think he's put it together. He hasn't put it together in pure bunch sprints yet uh, for that reason. And Mickles looks the real deal. So he's a fantastic signing. But as yeah, as we said, once he's 21, gets a couple of World Tour wins, I'd be coming with a big contract. And then you could lose him. That's why you sign him for, if there's not much interest, put him on a four-year. Because like, yeah, but he, he's, what's the downside? He's not going to go from sixth at Grand Piemonte as a teenager to a complete washed, useless rider. Exactly. But there's also the aspect of like, if he's going to sign that four-year deal, if he knows that he might be, get a better would, yeah. contract elsewhere in two years. Oh, okay. But like you spoke about Binyam and his sprinting capabilities and Mikkels closing that down and so forth and as an overall rider coming closer. But for Binyam, I'm not looking at the sprint, the pure sprints. Like, sorry, for, but for Binyam, the pure sprints, I don't care. Like, whether he does them or doesn't do them like Vanderpool, I don't care. I'm more looking at his chances to win an RVV and so forth in the future. And... I think his team is not necessarily strong enough to be able to put him in situations that he can win those races yet because he had to do a lot last year alone. But maybe with a turn in some extra, that might increase his chances a tiny bit. But I still think it's going to be very different, very difficult to do it. Or, or do you feel like he can do it in a similar way where Kuyen and Madu was were both there last year when it comes to Grupama, for example, two riders? Can Mike Tunis and Binyam have such a dynamic as well? Or is that not expected? I think so. RVVs, I don't see Turnison making it over yeah. Claremont when the big boys slap it in RVV. Yeah. I just Group don't ahead. see that. He has to be ahead, yeah. Has to be ahead. Um, can he and other guys pull things back and make it? Yeah, probably. Um, Trista Poulter, I think, is a nice rider. I think he might surprise next year straight away he's only 20 years old um but yeah it's not that deep it's experienced but there's not that like class of like pog has trent in pulling things back purely as a domestique yeah. vanderpool now has quinton hermans uh mm. Kra, 
Ineos have got six strong guys. Jumbo Visma have Laporte, Benoit, Van Aert, Van Bala, Tratnik. Like, it's it's tough. And so Binny will get worked. I, I just don't think it's any avoiding it. Now on to Rune Hergolds for a second. It's a guy that is strong when it comes to time trial. We see that this team is pretty much terrible at time trialing. Or even when it comes to the setup, is not ideal when it comes to time trial. So is it a mistake from him to go to enter Marche nah, for its time perfect. trials? Or will he get other opportunities in other races, like the breakaway stage in Valenciana, for example? What area do you see him going to? Oh, I mean, what World Tour time trial is he winning anyway? Like, That's true. If Kuhn can't win one, then I don't think he will. Uh, I'm surprised Quickstep didn't get him. He's yeah. the classic cheap rider they used to sign at 24. Wasn't wasn't Lampart Rune Herrholtz? Wasn't that who he was? Like a 24-year-old on mm. Top Sport? Who got Did signed? Lampard not win Duarte of Vlaanderen at Top Sport before he got signed? I think he had classics real. I'm not sure. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a nice signing. You'll see him in the break. What I... It's what you mentioned, though. He, he'll be... He's like Taco. He's going to be Taco's little understudy, um, <laughs> I think. But And he'll try and progress to winning Grand Tour stages like Taco has. But yeah. you mentioned it. What I didn't really like was the Bonifacio signing 29 it's like how many Conti sprinters do you actually need like I, I think you can take a climber like Karmaja he's a different style of rider you can target different stages you're not overloaded in the climbing department but Bonifacio is he a lead out for Herbin Thaisen like, what's his role? Because he just is yep. another... Like, he's not... Intermarche aren't so spectacular that they can take a misc sprinter who hasn't been performing for Total and make him suddenly winning Tour de France stages. Pretty good, doesn't yep. it? Because if they can do that, then that's unbelievable. What You know, why wouldn't they sign someone like Axel Laurence who went to Alperson's dev team? Maybe he just wanted to go to Alperson. What do you think about... Laurent's going to his dev team, by the way, because we already had the Alperson preview. Yeah? I was surprised because wasn't it that 17 World Tour teams all wanted to sign him? And then he gets yeah. stashed at, a, at the dev team at Conti level, which means, of course, he will do... He can do all the dot pro races with the World Tour team, like Casper um, Van Uden for DSM or... Conchi last year at Alperson? Yeah, yeah Conchi. But... Why would you do that if you were Axel Laurence? Yeah. But also, there's the, well, there's the aspect that I'd argue that Alpecin is probably a lot more attractive than a lot of other teams for multiple reasons. Starting off with the fact that the management actually knows the rules <laughs> in terms of like uh, relegation and so forth, that kind of stuff. But also the rules when it comes to being able to stash a guy on their dev team and then sign him the next year, for example. I think a lot of welter teams would be like not looking into that. But then again, there's also the aspect of is this exploiting the system by stashing a rider that is clearly good enough for a world tour team in their dev team? I'd argue that I blame the UCI for allowing such exploitable rules to exist in the first place. Oh, I mean, you got to get credit for having a dev team. Like yep. Ineos can't do it. Um, and Intermarche can't do it. Because they don't have dev teams, so I guess it's a benefit for Will stumping they? up the cash. Will any? I remember one? that. I remember that Anton Marche is going to have one with Kevin von Melsen or something, or was that a junior team? I'm not sure. Uh, with Kevin von Melsen, who retires and becomes the team leader of that team, so I'm not sure if that was a U23 or a junior team. So I have to check that out after recording right. this podcast. But when it comes to Ineos, can't they not just have like an agreement with? No, they can't. There, no, That's they not can't. The same thing. But then they can't ride with the team yeah, in the dog. Exactly. Pros. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was surprised by that. <laughs> yeah, people. Uh, maybe Laurence just really, really wanted to go to Alpson. I'm not sure. Maybe he didn't have better offers. Who knows? Cobble Classics we mentioned. Hill Classics is looking pretty light. Herman's is out. Does Benny have to skip? Opening weekend and peak for E3 RVV Amstel. 
I I think he might ride. It depends on his results in the Cobble Classics as well. I think if he has like if he randomly shows up and wins RVV, I don't think he's gonna step up and still ride Amstel. And so I think he's gonna go celebrate. But if the performances aren't necessarily re- resulting in actual achievements so far, then I think he should ride an Amstel because it definitely fits him. I think LBL he doesn't need to do flesh he doesn't need to do so. Is it that much longer of a peak to do Amstel? Depends where it is because they mix it, move it around a little bit. But I, I think he has to do Amstel because the team's looking pretty light. Like, who are there? Is it Lorenzo Rota, Rui Costa, yeah. um, Patelli? It's not the best. Taco, maybe. I don't know. It's George Zimmerman. I expected him to be a little bit better this year. It's not the, the flashiest uh, Hill team, but listen. Teams with these budgets, it's unrealistic to expect them to be stacked in every single category. Yep. Of course, they're going to be strong in some areas and weaker in other areas. That's where they're a little bit weaker. Giro d'Italia, heavy in the TT. I reckon. I reckon they'll just go for top ten in GC again, and maybe a stage with Taco or Roto will have to do it because he's Italian. Who else is yep. Italian and here? Bonifacio. <laughs> Potentially Pozzo if they re-sign him. Yeah. They have spots left to re-sign him, by the way. They've they got do. a total of 29. They do, yeah. By but the way... I need to check if they have enough youngsters. They do, because Deperture and Nichols. Yep, they got another spot open. Did we mention Zimmerman for the for the Hill Classics? Because yeah. I feel like he was top 15 at Montreal and so forth, so definitely fits in those races. But, well, one of the sprinters has to go to the Giro, eh? Because, like, if you've got 10 sprinters, one of them has to go. And... It's kind of, it's a rather versatile sprinting parkour, if my memory serves me right, while the Tour is more the flatter sprints. Do you see them perhaps... Michels. I don't know. Michels? <laughs> I know Send you want him. them there. <laughs> Send him. Let's give him a lead out on those MISC stages. I don't know. Maybe he's not that good. It depends. It's six months from now and he's 19 years old. Like he could improve quite a lot. But yeah, none of the other sprinters really jumping out at me as like a clear sort of nailed on sprinter. I would probably send. Yeah, I think Tyson's their best sprinter. Um, Because he's. Binyam is going to the tour. Let's be honest about it. Binyam is going to the Tour de France. Turnison. On paper, fits on those Giro Hillier sprints. No, nah, but he's got classics, but right? I think exactly classics and support in the Tour de France seems yeah. to be more likely the outcome for him, is what I would say. Yeah. And Marty's Mikkels, I think they might send to the Vuelta. But then again, Hugo Page is floating around somewhere, hoping he gets a shot somewhere. So I don't know. I, f- I think Hugo Page might be more the guy that they that they send to those. Coupe de France races for now and see how he tries to clean those for now. I think he's... Hugo Page was quite good in the Dauphiné. He might be good. In the... it's... All these guys are kind of versatile sprinters without that yep. huge kick. Christoph was just a little bit above, you know, all these guys apart from maybe Tyson. Uh, Arne Marit... Oh, no, I'm not putting myself into Arne Marit. He's like fine, but... um. I think he'll just do the local calendar, to be honest. Mate, yeah, Giro, mate, it'll be interesting. You want the sliding sprays? Put the Capellan at the end of the season, bro. This is Nat next to it, which means it shouldn't be on PCS, in my opinion. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mankies will solo try top 10 GC at the Tour. I think he will. Uh, the Giro, yep. Tarame will go for a stage with Tyson, we think. Classics, we already spoke about. Binny and Turnison. Hill's a bit weak. Maybe I'll try to extend Binny's season. Binny has to be targeting Yellow, right? Can he take yep. Yellow? Can he get over yep. uh, Hayeskabel? And where do you think he can compete with Pog, Van der Poel, Van Aert, Alaphilippe on that first little uphill finish? Yeah, I think he can compete there. I think he can get over that. It depends on how good Alaphilippe is. If Alaphilippe is in his um, launder no form, then everybody might have trouble following him. Yeah. But if he's if Alaphilippe's in 
the shape that Lefebvre says he's in, then he gets dropped on. Um, no, it's not high skill. It's high skill is the next stage. It's Code to PK is the yeah. first stage. Uh, that's 2Ks, 10%. Binny, yeah. that should be a piece of cake for Binny, unless they really slap it. And same with the next stage. So he's got two chances, real chances, to win a Tour de France stage um, in the first couple of stages. With Turnison's a good lead out. Remember, Mike Turnison led out Wout van Aert a year and a half ago on the Champs Elysees to beat Cav um, yep. and, and, and on his own with no help. And he's gotten over to Pajo before, but you say if people smash it on the Outer Quartermont, then RVV he can't follow, but. Can he follow if they smash it on a 2K 10% climb then? PK, I think he, say he gets dropped by five seconds, it's going to be fucking strung out and stressful. They will be slapping it into the base of the next. So he will yeah. functionally, he will not be able to make it up in time to then provide much help, I don't think, for Benny. Uh, the yeah. next stage, he should get over the Hayeska Bell. And then there's a, a longer period of time to yeah. get to the front, just longer descent to help. Pedersen as well, who's doing um, Trek have decided they've gone from both underrating Pedersen to now making him win every single World Tour race that they attend <laughs> next year. He's doing what? Classics, Giro Tour. So Vanderpool did that. Worlds. Worked out well. And Worlds, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he Apparently, should be good for those first few stages too. Apparently, they're cherry picking certain classics to go to. So then I'm guessing he's not going to the opening weekend, which improves it a tiny bit more, but it's still okay. quite a bit of work. I think Roubaix is going to be the most important one for him. Yeah. But then again, I think RVV should also work in the form that he is in at a Vuelta, for example. The man was climbing yeah. significantly stronger than I think a lot of people would expect. So, yeah. That'll be Binny's one of the big, big team goals for the year. Yeah. I think is is the opening few stages, so win, winning a tour stage with Binny, and then Vuelta will be you know who knows a mix. They've never done it. Win a tour, tour stage. stage. BMC did. If we, are we counting the BMC wins? Well, of course, we're not counting BMC. <laughs> it's literally a different team, but they took the same, the same license. license. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did CCC win one? Probably not. No. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, oh. Okay. That's a that's a big goal. Um, that'll be huge publicity if it does happen. And I think they're going to stay on top of the points because you never know what could happen. Benny could crash or something bad could happen. I think they're going to stay on top of not maybe sprinting with two guys, but you look at the construction of this team, you look at the calendar they're going to send them to, they are going to score points, and there's no better year than the first year to score those points to save yep. a mad rush in 2025. Speaking, any last thoughts on Intermarche, Benji, before I continue on relegation? No, just pretty straightforward, I think. Um, yeah. Vinny going for Classics Tour as their most important rider in the team, in my opinion. And I think they still have those excessive amount of sprinters because they still want to score points in those one not one races throughout the season. And I hope that we see a good season from a Herbin Tyson, from a Hugo Page, Marty's Mikkels making a step forward, just all those riders. And let's see if it works, the, getting the old guys in like Rukosta and seeing if they can revitalize their career a tiny bit for at least a single year at Antomarche. But hey, I'm hyped about it. It was one of the most overperforming teams compared to budget in 2022. And let's see if they can kick that again in 2023. But I think it's going to be hard to do as good in 2023 than in 2022. Yeah, I think they might have a little bit of bounce back to earth because that's just how it is. Uh, 22 wins is tough with that many World Tour wins, but hopefully they do. But anyway, thanks for listening as always. Thanks to Zwift, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.